he has finally arrived. He has been an extremely long and stressful wait, more than a month. But Air 3 is finally here. I have not seen any video about photography with the new DJI model yet. So I will start by focusing on how the new model performs with still images, as I know that many of you are into photography. When DJI officially announced the specs of the Air 3, everyone was expecting an improved version or the Air 2S. But the new model takes a different direction. The Air 2S is a favorite of many enthusiasts and a benchmark in terms of video and photo quality. Thanks to the 1 inch sensor and the true 20 megapixel photo resolution, this model is second only to the mighty Mavi 3 in terms of still image quality in DJI prosumer line with extreme detail and very balanced colors. The only real downside was the battery life of only 26 minutes, simply not enough for today's standards. Not a deal breaker for photography, but it makes life very hard when shooting hyperlapses. The R3 has a smaller sensor of 1 over 1.3 inches the same size as the one of the Mini 3 Pro, with a real photo resolution of 12 megapixel, a field of view equivalent to 24 mm, and a very wide aperture of f1.7, basically the same photo specs as the Mini 3 Pro. I'm not going to analyze the specs for a video, as I will make a specific separate analysis of footage quality with this model. The Air 3 is designed as a very versatile drone, a bit like a Mini 3 Pro on steroids, instead of a competitor or the Air 2S. The new model offers an array of very powerful features, some of them unexpected. Battery life is a whopping 46 minutes, at least on paper, which is a hyperlapser stream. It is much more powerful than Mini 3 Pro in terms of wind resistance and speed. Signal transmission, the only real weak point of the Mini 3 Pro, has apparently been massively improved. The Air 3 even offers features like omnidirectional obstacle avoidance and waypoint mode for a video, functionalities that so far were exclusive to the flagship model of the prosumer line. These features only marginally apply to photography, therefore I will analyze them in depth in specific videos. But the big unexpected new feature is the dual lens system, so far seen only on the recent Mavic 3. Next to the usual wide-angle lens, the R3 is also supplied with a 70mm equivalent moderate telephoto lens for a zoom factor of approximately 3 times, with an aperture of f2.8 and the same sensor size of 1 over 1.3 inches. When I started using drone for videography and photography about 10 years ago, the image quality was much lower compared to ground-based DSLR cameras. But the thing I missed the most was the ability to swap lenses with different focal lengths. The choice of the two focal lengths in the R3 is exactly what the doctor ordered. The main lens at 24mm is the traditional wide-angle view on most drones. While 70mm is the perfect length to reach targets we cannot otherwise get to due to regulation, for close-up cityscape, for filming wildlife without disturbing, or for spying the neighbors. Just kidding. It is also a perfect length to compress the different layers of a scene to obtain a different perspective, or for parallax effect. The photo modes available are the same as the Mini 3 Pro, single photo, the so-called 48 megapixel mode, automatic exposure bracketing, burst and time shots. But the 48 megapixel mode is not in the photo menu anymore. It can be accessed in the camera tab of the settings. It can now be applied not only to single photos, but also to automatic exposure bracketing, and apparently also to panorama and hyperlapses, but I will analyze these modes in specific videos. 
Another major difference is the presence of the two icons for toggling between the two lenses. The one labeled 1x is for the wide angle lens, and the 3x one is for the telephoto lens. These two icons replace the one for switching to vertical orientation in the Mini 3 Pro. When choosing the automatic exposure bracketing mode, we have the usual choice between three or five photos taken at different exposure values with an interval of two thirds of a stop. I find this mode very useful and I use it practically all the times for two reasons. It makes sure to always have an image perfectly exposed. And in sometimes better results can be obtained by merging the five images to HDR using programs like Luminar Neo, the one I use. You will find info about Luminar in the description and you can watch my specific video by clicking on the link. Let's have a look at some images. The light conditions are horrible. It is the month of August in Sicily and during the summer here there is extremely low visibility due to moisture and dirt in the air. We can hardly see the difference between the sea and the sky. I would never shoot photos or video during the summer here, but for the purpose of testing these conditions are actually helpful as we can test how the camera reacts to the most difficult light. In the last month the region has been ravaged by fires, as you can clearly see. Images taken in normal daylight with the wide angle lens are very pleasant considering the horrible condition, with well balanced colors and an organic feel, similar to the one of the Mini 3 Pro. The detail is certainly not the same as the r 2 s but this was expected due to the smaller sensor and the lower resolution. I'm doing an article on my blog about this same topic, where I will include downloadable JPEG files of most of the images shown here. It will be ready the day after I publish this video. I will post a link in the description as soon as the article is ready. The name of my blog is very easy, vicvideopic.com. You will find their article on the same topics as the videos in my channel, but more text-based. If you're looking for a specific answer to a technical topic, it might be quicker to find it there. The telephoto lens produces images much darker compared to the one angle lens with the same setting. The difference is about one and a half stops. This is not surprising given the difference in the aperture of the two lenses. It is slightly annoying for users who don't rely on computer editing, but it helps to shoot five bracketed images and then choose a brighter one for the shots taken with the telephoto lens. The quality of the images taken with the telephoto lens is excellent and this is very good news as it makes it very easy to integrate photos taken with the two lenses on the same project. The photos are maybe even better than the 28mm, with more contrast and slightly more detail, and this is a massive positive surprise. The quality of the JPEG photos is excellent, and this is good news for users who don't rely on computer editing. I still prefer to use raw photos as they contain a bit more info and respond better to post-processing but the JPEG files have constantly improved in DJI prosumer drones, and I find one of the R3 even better than the Mini 3 Pro. Turning the camera down for top-down shots, we take the sky out of the equation to focus on detail and color rendition. The colors are nice and well balanced, with a good amount of information in the shadows. The detail is certainly not the strong point, but the scene looks very natural. The rendition of the R3 is very close to the one of the Mini 3 Pro, but obviously nowhere near the Mavic 3. The same images taken with the telephoto lens are excellent, with more detail and contrast. I'm starting to get very, very excited about this lens. Like the Mini 3 Pro, the R3 offers a so-called 48 megapixel mode. 
There is often some confusion, as many users are led to believe that by magic these models have a photo resolution of 48 megapixels and therefore a better photo quality than the R2S on or even the Mavic 3. This is absolutely wrong. The R3, like the Mini 3 Pro and several smartphones, has a quad Bayer sensor, capable of splitting each pixel into four smaller ones, therefore achieving a sort of 48 megapixel resolution. The issue is that each pixel is very small and cannot collect much light. This technology is still a work in progress that can have some small benefits under specific light condition. But to state that this model has a photo resolution of 48 megapixels is seriously misleading. Here you can see a comparison between images shot in 48 megapixels versus other in 12 megapixels. In my opinion, the difference, if any, is hardly noticeable. Also, to be noted that the 48 megapixel images produce extra large files that require plenty of computing resources when inserted in a video timeline. And now the torture room. Some images shot against the direction of the sun, the hardest possible test for the lenses. The first one is in the direction of the sun just before sunrise. Not the most extreme HDR, but the different luminosity between the sky and the elements on the ground is very important. The wide-angle lens does an excellent job of reproducing a lot of detail in the shadows. In all these HDR images I have not used masks or merged into HDR, which would obviously yield even better results. In this one the sun is just out of the left edge of the frame a couple of hours before sunset, with the usual horrible summer light conditions. There is plenty of haze and dirt in the air. In real life I could hardly see Mount Etna at all. The 28mm lens does a sensational job. Again, plenty of detail in the shadows, no chromatic aberration, and very little loss of detail and saturation in the area near the sun. This one is the hardest possible situation, against the full uncovered sun. The result is simply astonishing. It is hard to believe how much the technology and the quality of the lens have improved in the last couple of years. The results with the 70mm lens are also excellent, even though the shadows are slightly darker. In low-light photography, the Mini 3 Pro has shown outstanding results, due in part to the extreme aperture of f1.7. I was expecting something similar with the R3, at least with the wide-angle lens, but the results are beyond belief. I know a lot of you will think that these are not low-light conditions, but believe me, it was very dark, with the last bit of twilight well after sunset and artificial lights. These are situations where the previous models of the DJI line used to struggle and we needed to boost the ISO value, generating a good amount of noise. With the 28mm lens we can simply forget about noise and ISO, we never need to move it from the base value. We can even expose the image to look as if it was full daylight. A very similar result is obtained with the 70mm lens in spite of the smaller aperture of f2.8. Click on this link to watch my video about panorama photography with the R3. It will be ready a few days after I publish this one. In the meantime, you can watch my video about photography settings in the Mini 3 Pro, since they're almost the same as on the R3. Don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.